Hello, everyone. A very good morning to all of you. So here again in this video, uh, we'll be discussing about three more important concepts that were recently in news. So this is our sixth video in our uh, NABARD daily quiz series. So here the three topics are, one is in front of you, that is Global Hunger Index. Hunger Index, sorry. Uh, the other two are uh, carbon farming. Carbon farming. And uh, one is world food price. Okay, so first let's discuss this. The question that I asked you in our group was that, what is India's rank in Global Hunger Index 2023? So the correct answer for this is 111. Okay. So most of you, I was surprised that many of you were not able to give me the correct answer about that. Uh, 107 was the rank last year, but in 2023, it was 111. Okay. So let's discuss about Global Hunger Index. This index is published by uh, two NGOs, Concern Worldwide, Concern Worldwide, and the other one is uh, Wealth Hunger Life. Wealth Hunger Life. Okay. Earlier there was one more uh, institution that was involved in this index that was. International Food Policy Research in Institute. Okay, uh, but in two, 2018, uh, this organization withdrew from this and they said that we will not be part of this particular index. Actually, this index has been a, a matter of debate in our country because consistently India is among the lowest performing countries. Out of 125 countries that were evaluated on this index, India was ranked 111 way behind Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, and China was ranked among top countries, among 20 top countries. Okay. The, this index do not give the ranking for top 20 countries. Okay, So top 20 countries are considered as they are performing good. Okay. So let's talk about this index. This index is based on uh, total four parameters. One is general undernourishment. undernourishment undernourishment of whom undernourishment of entire population all the adults okay undernourishment means the person is not getting the required amount of calories that he or she should take according to fao the required amount of calorie for an average person is from 1650 to 2000 kilocalories okay, per day, kilocalories. Okay, this varies among different countries according to the climatic conditions there, okay, but uh, the general uh, uh, range is 1650 to 2000 calories, kilocalories per person per day is required for an average person. Okay, So those who are not getting this amount of calorie, according to this hunger index, it has taken, uh, I think, 1800 uh, kilocalories as the base index okay for calculating this so those who are not getting this amount of uh, calories they are considered as undernourished next index is child stunting which means that the height of the child is not appropriate as uh, the age of with the age of the child uh, the height is not increasing and uh, the third one is child wasting. According to the height, the weight of the child is not uh, according to the height of the child. Okay, We calculate a BMI, body mass index, that gives an indication of height to weight ratios. Okay? So here the weight of the child is not less as compared to uh, when we compare that uh, with the height. The last one is child mortality, death of the at the childhood stage. Okay. So India is saying that, yes, okay, we are okay that uh, you are taking this uh, parameter under nourishment. Okay, this is a, uh, according to the WF, uh, FAO parameters. 
but uh, when we talk about uh, child stunting child wasting and child mortality there can be various other reasons for these okay child mortality uh, non availability of food or non availability of nutritious food is not the only reason for the death of the child it may be because of uh, famine or some pandemic or some other illnesses okay because of lack of infrastructure and healthcare facility okay these may be the reasons for this okay so in case saying that uh, and uh, one more uh, argument that uh, we are giving is that we are allocating equal weightage to all these parameters one third weightage is given to child mortality one third weightage is given to child uh, stunting and wasting and one third is given for undernourishment okay one more argument from india in this uh, weightage is that for 80% of the population who are not children and they are not getting a uh, better nourishment you are giving the same weightage as compared to only 20% of the population okay children constitute 20% of the population okay rest of the population are adults 80% so here in they saying that you should give more weightage to this uh, particular first parameter okay but you are giving equal weightage similarly you are giving more weightage uh, here one third weightage for child stunting and child wasting what do you mean by child uh, child stunting and child wasting are these are the two parameters which indicate which do not indicate undernourishment okay it indicates undernutrition okay under nutrition under there is a difference between undernourishment and undernutrition undernourishment is this availability of less calorie per day okay and under nutrition is unbalanced food, the food that you get where you, you will get calorie but that food will be poor in some or other major nutrient which is equally important for a healthy person okay so this here under nourishment uh, see child stunting and child wasting the major region here is under nutrition not under nourishment here we are talking about hunger okay we are not talking about nutrition so here uh, you are first of all you are taking these parameters and again you are giving the equal weightage as compared to under nourishment here okay that is also in there is argument. okay so these are uh, this child stunting is due to uh, chronic under nutrition chronic uh, yeah chronic undernutrition chronic undernutrition what is chronic when when you are providing a, a food to a child for a continuous duration for the, for a long time a food which is not perfect which is poor in nutrition okay in that case the growth of the child will happen child will grow but the body of the child will not get enough nutrition it will have enough for its survival but for not for the proper growth so therefore with the time the height of the, the child will keep on decreasing it will remain low as compared to the age okay similarly there here child wasting child wasting is due to acute undernutrition acute undernutrition acute undernutrition means for a short duration of time that child is not getting proper uh, nutritious food okay so here what will happen here in the chronic one there was uh, the food was having the nutrition but not up to the mark okay? it was little bit lower than what is required okay but here severely lower quantity of nutrition for a shorter duration time what will happen here the weight of the child will drastically decrease in this case okay weight will decrease so the wasting child wasting is due to acute undernutrition and the child stunting is due to chronic undernutrition okay so all these are because of undernutrition but uh, the concern worldwide and uh, wealth hunger like these two ngos are giving equal weightage to these things okay so therefore india is contradicting these uh, uh, parameters and uh, saying that uh, this do not reflect the hunger situation in our country okay you are giving more uh, uh, 
rank a good ranking to uh, the nations which are way behind us in economic terms and also in terms of prosperity okay so okay so apart from that you must also uh, remember the uh, the score that india achieved here 111th rank in uh, was because india had scored 28 point Seven. The lower the score, the higher is the rank. Here. The lower is the rank, the, or, or the better performing state it is. Okay. World score is 18.3. Uh, okay. So the average score of the world is way better than India. And those who, who score in global hung, hunger index is less than 5, they are in the top 20. Okay. Top 20. How the score is calculated? I had told you now. One third of it is given. Out of 100, this score is calculated. Okay. So if you have your country have scored 0 to 10, okay, there is low amount of un, uh, hunger in, in the country. From 10 to 20, there is moderate. From 20 to 35, it is severe. Severe, under, uh, severe hunger. So India comes under this severe category. Okay, 35 to 50, uh, 35 to 50, it will be uh, alarming. Yes, alarming. It is an alarming situation. Above 50, above 50, it will be extremely alarming. Okay, extremely alarming. So India is in the severe situation. So the top 20 countries who are having less than five score in global hunger index, they are, they have a low hunger index. Okay, so these things you should also remember. These all these things, this particular global hunger index becomes part of your GK question. In GK, only this will be asked. Okay, this question, same to same, it may appear. Okay? But uh, in your if this topic comes in your ESI, the the question can be from anywhere, from the score. Uh, score also comes under GK part. From these these parameters and in mains also you may you may face questions about the contradictions or the shortcomings of global hunger index. Okay, these questions may appear. Okay, so that's all about uh, global hunger index. Let's uh, move on to the next question. Yeah, carbon farm. Which of the following statement correctly describes carbon farming? Okay, this topic uh, uh, I have uh, described in our. Uh, third video okay when we were discussing about biochar during uh, the discussion of this topic in our third video i have told you now uh, explain about carbon sequestration okay biochar helps in carbon sequestration okay so all those uh, agricultural practices uh, which helps in storing carbon in the biological pool for a longer duration of time such practices are called carbon farming Okay, removing the CO2 from the atmosphere, plant do photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, what happens? Plant utilize water from the soil, CO2 from the atmosphere. Okay, and uh, in the presence of light, we make carbon carbohydrate. Okay, so the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is fixed inside the plant biomass. After the plant is dead, or when our crop, after harvesting our crop, we consume only seeds. Rest of the plant, rest biomass is rich in carbon. Okay, carbohydrate is present here also. Seeds we are consuming, okay. So if we can uh, store these uh, this biomass without degradation for a longer time, then which means that we are actually sequestering the carbon. Carbon sequestration means uh, storing the atmospheric carbon into the bio pool for a longer duration of time. So here we have taken carbon pro from the atmosphere, taken this carbon out of the atmosphere here and stored it in the plant biomass. So these plant biomass need to be degraded by the microorganisms or need to be burned through us. We, we, do, not, we do stubble burning in uh, northwestern India, stubble burning. During that, what happens? CO2 will again combined with oxygen and carbon again combines with oxygen and CO2 is again released into the atmosphere. If we avoid that and also if you uh, devise new uh, technologies to uh, stop the degradation of this biomass for a longer duration of time, 
then actually we are doing carbon sequestration or we are doing carbon farming. There are many different ways. This is the agricultural crop production practice. By uh, scientifically managing soil also, we can uh, do carbon far farming. Soil also, uh, you must have heard about a term that is conservation tillage. Conservation tillage. Tillage, you know, disturbing the soil. We disturb the soil so that more air can pass and more microbial activity can happen in the soil. So more degradation and the nutrients which are trapped in uh, organic matter, they will be released. But in conservation tillage, we do minimal, minimal disturbance to the soil so that only the nutrition that is required by our plant Okay, only that much degradation takes place in the in soil and the rest of the organic material remain in the soil and provide other uh, uh, physical or uh, uh, physical or chemical, only mostly it's physical, physical benefits or the improve the physical condition of the soil. Okay, so here conservation tillage, we do minimum tillage, disturb the soil to the minimum so that only the required amount of air and water can pass through the uh, to the lower or uh, entire solar and the plants in that region that we are growing they only grow and uh, they uh, take the nourishment from the sun rest of the area in our field should remain undisturbed as, and there so therefore the microbial activity will remain minimal in those areas. okay in biochar what happens in biochar the plant material that is uh, present here after eating the seeds, the biomass that is present here, that biomass is heated in limited supply of oxygen, in very limited supply of oxygen. So if oxygen is not available, carbon cannot combine with oxygen and can uh, CO2 can't be formed. Okay, but what is formed uh, uh, during this process? That is biochar, a black color, a coal-like mass. Okay. So most of the carbon that is trapped, uh, present in the biomass, with, that becomes trapped in the biochar. And because of the physiochemical properties of this biochar, microbial action on this uh, particular form of carbon is very limited. This I have explained you in our third video. So in case you have not watched that, you can go and watch there also. There also if this has been explained. So which of the following option best describes carbon farming? Practicing ag agriculture on barren land, this do not describe. Agriculture practices which use only plant-based organic input is not describing because we are, we are not talking about here sequestration. Agricultural methods that aims to store carbon in the soil, in crop roots and woods and leaves. Okay, store the carbon. Okay, yeah, this is describing. This is one of the correct option. But let us study this option also. If this is describing in a much better way. Any method that remove carbon from the atmosphere? No, this is also not necessary. We are talking about farming, no? So these are the agricultural practices. So the third answer is correct. C is the correct answer for this question. So this uh, topic, uh, I think it's clear to you. Move on to the next uh, question. Who among the following is or are recipients of world Food Prize 2024. So this is a very latest news. And this, the question from this topic may appear in your GK portion or your ARD portion also. In ARD, Agriculture and Rural Development portion. In Agriculture portion, it may appear. Okay. So let's uh, solve this. Carrie Fowler and Geoffrey Houghton. These two are the persons who received this year's Nobel Food Prize or World Food Prize. It is also called uh, the Nobel in Agriculture. Okay. So both one and two are both correct. Yeah. A and B are both correct. Okay. Hedi Kuhn received in 2023. Okay. What is their contribution? They had a great role in uh, preserving plant crop genes. 
crop genes. Okay, they created a, a structure that is known as doomsday vault. Doomsday vault. You can see the picture here also. Yeah, yeah. This is a structure in uh, Norway. It is called Doomsday Vault, or uh, it is present in uh, Svalbard. Svalbard, that's why it is uh, officially it is known as Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This is nothing but a structure which stores the seeds of all the crops. Or we can say most of the crop, it's the they are uh, still in the process of acquiring more and more seeds from different regions of the world. Okay, so here all the seeds of all the varieties of different crops are stored here in this board. Okay, this is the global seed board. Okay, this is present in Svalbard. Svalbard is an island uh, uh, in the, in uh, Norway. You can see here the Norway. This is uh, Sweden, if yeah, it is Sweden, and if it is Finland, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Can you imagine here? It here it's the Russia. Here it's the Russia. Okay, these are the Nordic nations, and here Greenland, and here North Pole, North Pole. So somewhere above uh, Norway here. You will find an uh, archipelago. Archipelago is a group of islands. Okay. This is called Spitzberg. Spitzberg. Yeah. Within this uh, Salvador archipelago, there is an island known as Spitzberg. Okay. On this island only, this particular uh, global seed, seed vault has been made and it is under underground seed vault here you can see the mountain within the mountain in deep inside there is a, a chamber where seeds are stored okay so all this uh, happened uh, from 2001 when uh, these two persons Hortin and Fowler they negotiated or they tried uh, to uh, uh, or convince the world leaders to agreed to a treaty that is known as International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. Okay, this treaty was signed in 2001 and uh, during this uh, treaty only or uh, this treaty only uh, was the background for establishment of this particular void. Okay. So this treaty was uh, all about sharing of genetic material or seeds. Seed is a genetic material, no? sharing of genetic material among different seed banks or we can say gene banks in the world. Okay, there are many gene banks which store seeds or the genes of the plant in some or other forms. Okay, so this treaty uh, made it easier or they devised different protocols Okay, for the sharing of the seeds or genes among these uh, gene banks. Okay. So this uh, treaty also envisages the creation of a backup plan or a backup seed bank for all the other seed banks. So therefore, on the basis of that, so this Salbat Global Seed Vault was made. Okay, this was the uh, idea of Fortin and Fowler, and they were the creator of this particular seed vault. Okay, so why uh, only the uh, this uh, IC and uh, an area near the North Pole was cho chosen because, you know, for storing any living uh, material, we need to reduce the reduce the metabolic rate. Metabolic rate is reduced at low temperature. So here in this seed board, uh, temperature that is maintained is minus 18 degree Celsius. Okay. So because the outer condition is very uh, cool, even when the power is cut off, uh, to uh, the temperature uh, for this temperature to increase up to minus two degree, which is also good for storage, but not very good as minus eighteen. To reach this temperature, it takes a long time. 
Okay. So therefore, this particular facility was chosen. Apart from that, here a lot of permafrost. Permafrost, you know, permanently frozen water in between the soil layers. Okay. Permafrost. Okay. So whenever uh, uh, this permafrost frost stops the heat uh, coming into this water, they absorb the heat, extra heat that is present in the atmosphere, and the ice will melt. So therefore, it acts as a barrier for the heat to, to enter this particular vault. Okay, so these are all the reasons why this particular location was selected. More importantly, here is the location Salvabad. What is it comes under the this particular Salvabad uh, archipelago comes under the Norway country. What is the capital of Norway? Oslo. Okay, so this particular Nordic nations also you can remember the name as for Sweden. Sweden is sandwiched between Norway and Finland. Okay, actually, when we were remembering, uh, we always used to forget which is uh, no Norway, we can uh, tell it is in the north, but Sweden and Finland, okay, that we used to forget. Then uh, I, did, I devised a sentence that, that the Sweden is sandwiched between Norway and Finland. So as for sandwich, as for Sweden, okay, we can now easily remember. Okay, so this was all about uh, this uh, particular video. And what are the topics that we discussed? Carbon farming. Uh, food price, global uh, world food price, and the third one, there is global hunger index. From world food price, this is the direct uh, thing that I have explained. Other than that, uh, the portions that may appear are, uh, it may be asked about what is germplasm, what is gene, in how many different uh, ways genes can be stored, Okay, all these things will be discussed in uh, through the questions only. Uh, I will put questions from all these concepts also. Okay, so that's all from my side in this video. Uh, I think by solving these questions only, you can uh, comfortably clear the links. Uh, so if you solve, watch all these videos. Uh, okay, okay, friends, uh, I'm ending this video now. Thank you very much for your patience listening.